please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I am Lata and with me Anuj and Sonia. Well, overnight we realized that India is indeed a very big consumer market and that a global biggie who is actually selling out in other countries is willing to put in no less than $16 billion dollars in the Indian staples market. So, okay, you can call it e-commerce, but uh, suddenly let's see if it gives wings uh, to the few e-commerce uh, companies that are listed. They're largely brick and mortar. Okay, let's come back to markets. Uh, the world has largely ignored the ir Iranian uh, uh, nuclear deal getting nuked. Uh, you saw uh, global equity markets actually rising on the strength of the energy shares. But one wonders if India can ignore it for too long. And let me present the math. Uh, why uh, you know uh, India gets affected negatively. The Reserve Bank, when it gave its forecasts for both inflation and growth, said that they are assuming crude at $68, which was uh, a very high number at that time uh, in March. But uh, they said that every $10 addition, that is, if crude was $78, then inflation rises by 30 basis points mm -hmm. and growth falls by 10 basis points. Uh, it didn't look at that time that it would be $10 more expensive, but now it is indeed at that price, very close to 77 and change. Uh, now, the bank Nifty has been actually the propeller of the Nifty in the past uh, week or so. Yesterday, there was a nasty jar which the market chose to ignore. Mm. Uh, the 10-year yield actually went from sub 7.6 to end at 7.71, and that was responding to the Iranian deal and to the rise in prices of crude. Now, today, we probably could ignore it because of uh, uh, weekly expiry. I don't know. I really want to hear Anuj on that. But uh, how long can we ignore it? It is a 7.71 yield, and it is an inflation that will be higher than higher by 30 basis points by the Reserve Bank's calculation as well. So at some point, the Nifty Bank and the NDFCs will have to take cognizance of that. I'll put one more data on the table. Yesterday, a 15-month-old uh, uh, public sector uh, CD was bought at 8.25%. I mean, if one-year rates or one-and-a-half-year rates are going at 825 can NBFCs ignore it? They will also raise money expensive and they will have to lend money expensive. We can't ignore that yield market. Okay. Alata, hi. Morning. Anuj, morning. And to add to all of that, you have weak numbers from the likes of Federal Bank, etc., that the market will have oh, to yeah. react to as well, right? Um, Anuj, you know, this market has had the penchant of climbing every mm. wall of worry. Now there are a few walls, right? There's higher crude, there's, Lata was talking about the bond deal, there's also things like the May 12th polling, etc. Do you get a sense that given all of this, this market will still sort of move higher, aided by perhaps sectoral leaders, banks, etc.? Morning, Sonia. Morning, Lata. You know, uh, as they say, Bhav Bhagwan Che. At the end of the day, uh, you know, you have to respect what the screen is telling you. Yeah. And the screen is telling you that uh, obviously there's been buying and the market has absorbed uh, most of the, the weakness. Uh, uh, with all these cues, we should have easily been down at least 1,000 points on the bank Nifty. We are not. Yes. Uh, the, there's also weekly options expiry today. So, uh, I don't know, today can be an interesting day mm. because... Uh, it, the bank nifty over the last four or five said that one month chart of the bank nifty it's shown signs of uh, a complete breakout uh, and every day something or the other helps the bank nifty two days back it was icici bank before that it was access uh, uh, in between sbi yesterday it was the uh, you know turn of indescent and kotak which came back uh, uh, so it's absorbed most of the negatives and i'll just put out a plate here uh, of the last four days the highs of the indices uh, if you see the nifty it's been in a bit of a rut, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. around the 10,720 7, to 750 thereabout. Uh, mm -hmm. That's been the high. Look at the high of the bank nifty for the last uh, three or four days. Consistently, 300 to, you know, 250 point higher is what we have had. Uh, uh, yesterday, of course, it slowed down a bit from the high point. So, uh, this could be because of expiry. I think 25,200 is what uh, looks like equilibrium for the bank nifty. Uh, so, perhaps for today, uh, at least for the first half, you buy time and then see if we have a 3 p.m. move. Uh, there are two or three warning signs, though, from here on. Uh, one is India VIX, which has been inching up. It's crossed 20 and 50-day moving average. Mm -hmm. And anecdotally, India VIX is now where it normally is at start of corrections. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, let the market give that message. And B, for last two days, the mid-cap index has been in the red. Advanced decline once again in favor of declines. Uh, not as bad as last week, but that's also one point that you have to keep at the back of your mind. Uh, and you have a bit of a mini binary event uh, and market has, I think, priced in a lot of good news. So uh, 
take it as a you know each day as it comes uh, uh, but don't preempt any correction let the market give you that sign once the market gives that sign for example if the market starts to close at the lows for two or three days i think that will be the sign till that sign is not there even if you're a reluctant buyer your basic instinct mm. has to be buy on dips yeah okay. no i i take this point about bhav bhagwan che for the trader mm -hmm. but i just wonder for the vakrangi trader which is the bhagwan was 400 rupees bhagwan or was 98 rupees bhagwan <laughs> that confusion still remains in my head you know so obviously we're talking about bank nifty and nifty and not vakrangi i mean obviously <laughs> no, no, you know i'm saying that, that uh, sometimes the price can exactly, be misleading exactly exactly Okay. Well, guys, don't lose sight of what's happening across the globe. The U.S. 10-year yield is now back above that 3% mark. So that's something as well that could be, uh, you know, uh, could cause some risk aversion in the equity markets. But let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Lawrence Balanco, we have a view coming in from CLSA. He says selective emerging market currency weakness as well as the breakout in emerging market bond spreads has resulted in the MSCI EM underperforming, resulting in the EM versus world. ratio testing the breakout area of the 2017 basing pattern he says the nifty continues to work its way higher following the march test and rebound off the shelf of support provided by the mid december 2017 lows which are at 10036 to 10168 area so the next upside objective is the 11185 area so lawrence blanco you know continues to stand with his 12000 target on the nifty in the medium term but 11185 is the level to watch Oh, yes. uh, well, I just wanted to add. I you know when you spoke about growth, when you look at Aishur and JSPL, the growth is unmistakable. Yes. Then when you look at Federal and the whole host of uh, Syntexes and the mid-cap stocks, some of them uh, maybe had a large number of weak results. So there is growth. So perhaps we can withstand the higher interest rates. I mean, I just I wanted to tell you when you were talking about results, yeah. some of the numbers are outstanding. And even growth. for li the likes of Federal, it is higher NPA recognition, yes. which we were of course expecting this quarter around, yeah, right? Maybe to some a, extent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a little more than expected in Federal's case. We'll get you some money market views. Uh, Mohan Chinnoy of Kotak Mahindra Bank says U.S. withdrawal of Iran nuclear deal has spiked oil prices. He says safe haven investments like gold and dollar rallied while Asian currencies, including the rupee, depreciated against the dollar. He expects the U.S. dollar and rupee to trade in a range of 67.20, 67.50 for the day. And he also talks about the bond market. He says the optimism generated in the GSEC market from OMO purchases. by the RBI was reversed by a sharp increase in crude oil prices and the depreciating rupee he expects the 10 year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.69 to 7.74% for the trading day okay overnight uh, the most interesting uh, 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 event to track was the walmart stock uh, that was of course a uh, down post that deal uh, but anyway here's mangalam with the world view Absolutely while we were watching out for Walmart uh, there were gains in the US markets and these gains moved lower of uh, as we move from the west to east so most of the europe uh, us markets all of them were up in the green led higher by energy stocks as well as the fact that the crude uh, 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 the crude prices rose and we saw the yields that one crossed the 3% mark as well so energy stocks oil stocks like chevron exxon mobil all of them led gains out there interestingly walmart you spoke about 8 and a half percent is a, 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 it was down 3% 8 and a half billion dollars is what it lost in market cap after it announced the deal with flipkart so uh, perhaps wall street believes that they paid a little more and then the gains they came off as we moved across the atlantic in the european indices too we saw gains mildly lower than what we saw on wall street there too the gains were led higher by oil prices or oil uh, or energy stocks burberry from the luxury space that stock was down 6% one of the investors they sold about 6% stake in the company so that took that stock lower but in the asian markets again muted gains uh, taking it lower from what we saw in the european markets as well but by and large more or less in the green suzuki motors from japan likely to uh, report their earnings soon the sgx nifty a ball on the good length no front foot no back foot absolutely flat All right. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Mangalam. That was neat. Uh, let's now look at one theme that might uh, be a big hurdle for the Indian equity markets. They've already proven to be a big hurdle for the Indian bond markets. Crude prices uh, 
close to 78, 77.79 as we speak. David Lennox, the uh, analyst at Fat Profits, joins us now. Uh, good morning, David. Uh, you know, it's inching up with each passing day. Uh, uh, the market, the equity markets are ignoring, okay, it's $1, so it's not very big. But now suddenly it is uh, at least $10 more than what it was in March. Should we get used to 78 or is it going to be something much worse? Good morning, Martha. Look, certainly if you have a look at the geopolitical events that are driving the oil price, you'd have to suggest that we're going to have to definitely get used to higher oil prices going into the future. That's primarily because if uh, the US, when we do know the detail of the sanctions, do apply those sanctions to Iranian oil, then that's going to remove something like one to one and a half million barrels of oil from the supply chain. And at this point, one would have to suggest that uh, demand will not fall by that same amount. So we're going to definitely see higher prices. And that's really what, at the moment, the markets are building in, the fact that, yes, we will see perhaps oil being removed from, a, from a, the supply chain, and that's going to cause uh, some pain for, for the uh, prices. Is there any hope that uh, the U.S., you know, opposition in the U.S. would sort of prevent the sanctions from going ahead? Look, it's difficult at this stage to determine what may happen there. What we've seen in the past is that the White House tends to put out the worst-case scenario and then see how markets react. And from that, they start to step back from that worst-case scenario. So perhaps this will be the same with the, the Iranian situation. We, we've seen the worst case. Yes, we're going to withdraw from the uh, nuclear deal with Iran and we will apply sanctions. And we may now start to see with the market reaction with Europe actually uh, continuing to try and push that deal. We may see the White House take some, uh, let's say, uh, less punitive action and those sanctions may not be so bad. So that's really a wait and see. And there's just no way that the market can uh, guesstimate which way that will go. So we would suggest that the, the, the price that we've seen is probably pertinent to the risk that we see in the market at the moment. Okay, let me put it this way, David, then. What is your base case? What is your worst case? I mean, uh, in the sense, what is your bear case and what is your bull case? Lata, look, at this stage, I'd have to suggest we really haven't got a bear case. We do think that uh, given the data sets that we've seen from, from various countries, regarding growth and, and confidence and employment that we would be expecting to see in the northern summer a, a quite a good move in demand. So from that perspective, we would have been watching oil prices rise anyway. And what we're seeing now is just that added extra geopolitical that's coming into the, into the oil markets that's giving it that extra zip along. At this point, we're going to maintain our Brent price year end at, at 74 to 84 dollars. So you can see we're already trading into our uh, end of year range. We're not at this point going to uh, move that, primarily because we do think that domestic production in the US in terms of oil will be somewhat of a headwind. Okay, 74 to 84 dollars a barrel. David, thanks so much for stopping by and speaking with us. So that's the view coming in on crude. Uh, be ready to live I with. Got the, was, yeah. uh, there is no bear case. Yeah. That's what uh, David began by saying. But uh, yeah, 74 to 84. Yes. But it's also important. I mean, the White House has in the in the past done this, right? Put out worst case scenarios and then taken a step back. No, I so think I guess this maybe... is a done deal. Calling back uh, the deal is uh, is not something they can now uh, get no, into. The imposing of the sanctions haven't been done yet so maybe the yeah it's from November mm -hmm. but, uh, I spoke to a bunch of experts yesterday uh, the uh, there is no uh, uh, taking Coming away from back. the fact that you cannot get Iranian oil and India has to make alternative arrangements for that uh, maybe there'll be some bit of barter that Iran can do yeah. with rupee goods it can do a lot of that with uh, Chinese goods because China has a fairly big renminbi trade that is this is the expert view mm. so india and china who are the biggest importers they can manage a lot with china because there is a renminbi trade and there can be a oil for good swap mm. likewise with india there is a much more smaller you know rice and soybean and things like that so but you know india imports nine billion dollars worth of crude 
all the agri commodities that we uh, uh, export to uh, Iran can at best be one billion dollars. Mm. So there isn't much of a swap that India can do. But with China, they can do a bit. That's it. Nobody is no. talking of uh, the sanctions not becoming mm. applicable. All right, let's do one thing. Let's take a short break on that note. On the other side of the break, we'll talk about the top 10 stocks to watch as we head into trade this morning. Well, this morning, uh, the SGX Nifty is quiet, but we've had a good the last few days. The market has been uh, closing with a green tick and banks have done well. So let's see how today shapes up. Our research team is here to give you the list of top 10 stocks to watch for the trading day. Uh, Anuj, what are you looking at today? So, uh, Sonia, a uh, bit counterintuitive, uh, HPCL uh, on the green side uh, bounced from 52-week low yesterday. Uh, of course, it will open lower, that's my sense, uh, but the key would be to defend the low, 288, uh, because you know, you're know now priced in the worst and uh, once the Karnataka election is out, I think you'll have some decision on uh, whether it's the price hike or whether, it, or not or whether it's you know excise cut or whatever, uh, some decision will be made and uh, you know, there are, uh, marketing margin is no longer the only determinant for stock prices, so I think uh, for me that is one stock where the risk reward perhaps is in your favour. Uh, the other one, of course, Titan, a strong buying ahead of results. Uh, it corrected from 1,000 uh, last time to 950 uh, and then is bouncing back. Uh, let's see this time if it can take uh, you know that 1,000 mark out, which last time was a bit of a top. So that will be interesting to watch. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Anuj. Uh, uh, what about uh, Aisha Bota numbers? Well, the numbers were good. Uh, they were largely in line with street estimates. Uh, the profits were below expectations because of a one-time exceptional loss. As I said, they've now uh, wound down their Pol Aisha Polaris JV, so they had a hit on account of that. But stripped of that, the operational performance was very good. What I really liked is that despite a decline in gross margins because of higher raw material costs, uh, operating leverage was strong and that really helped them with higher margins this time around. So they managed to hold on to margins of 31.5%, a gain of 100 basis points, and the revenue growth was solid, almost 35%. Uh, Importantly, in the conference call, the management said that volume growth has picked up in Maharashtra and Karnataka after sluggish last two quarters, and they will continue to protect gross margins uh, with price increases. Okay. Of course, the stock to watch early this morning will be Federal Bank. There was some indication in last 15 minutes when doing closing bell, we saw the intraday chart, and there's a massive decline and huge volumes. Uh, uh, that's of course one month. Just pull out yesterday's chart of Federal Bank and from the highs of 105, mm -hmm. uh, there was a bit of a collapse that took place. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, now we know the reason for that. Uh, Abhishek? Well, Anuj, they have reported the highest ever quarterly slippage at 872 crore versus 412 crore. You strip off the one of, uh, you know, slippage of 480 crore, it's still elevated at 380 odd crores. So, a normal uh, range for Federal Bank slippage is 250 to 300 crore. The net interest margin is at 9 quarter low at 3.11%. Typical range is between 3.28 to 3.33. And IA growth is at 8 quarter low of just 10.8, while the Pat, which uh, ranges between 250 to 300 crore, has come in at eight quarter low of uh, uh, 145 crore because of asset quality deterioration as gross NPA increased by 29% on an absolute basis, while in percentage gross NPA increased to 3% versus 2.52. Brokerages have cut their earning estimate and target price on Federal Bank, like Deutsche Bank has reduced the target price to 120, Prabhudas Lila to 128, and they believe that the ROA of one person, the road to that has got prolonged. Back to you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the big news uh, yesterday, of course, was this $16 billion purchase of uh, Flipkart by uh, Walmart. Uh, Mangalam, uh, uh, other uh, listed stocks, Future Group in particular? Future Group in particular, Lata, because uh, yesterday after uh, this deal was announced, there was a comment to one of the newspapers from Kishore Biani, and he said that he is looking to sell 10% stake in uh, uh, to a global retail player in the group and he's also in talks with Amazon and Walmart. Now, earlier we've been getting a lot of reports that you know a lot of the companies are looking to buy stake into the future uh, group companies, uh, more importantly future retail, but more than the news development, it's the timing of the news that may get the street excited because after the big deal that took place yesterday, a host of m &A activity might pick up in the retail space as well because now offline retailers aren't looking at online retails, retailers as competition, they're trying to you know work together, so let's see whether something fructifies or not. 
but more than the news, it is the timing which will keep the stocks excited. Okay, yes, <laughs> we expect a lot of those stocks to move up or maybe remain excited in trade. But let's find out how GSPL's numbers were this time around, Nigel. Numbers were very good. There was an exceptional item. That's because they made a provision for royalty on Ino. So stripped of that, in fact, it would have been a net profit. And three big segments were the domestic steel business, a bit up a ton of more than 12,500 rupees per ton. Splendid. Oman operations, 70 million uh, USD in terms of an EBITDA. That number looked very good. It's more than doubled in the last one year. The power business continues to struggle. Going ahead in FY19, if things are going to look good, the debt reduction plan is going to be crucial. The management said four to 5,000 crores is what they'll reduce in FY19. The stock should open up in the green. Okay. Thanks a lot for that, uh, uh, Nigel. Uh, very, very good numbers coming in from GSPL, barring the exceptional. Ikta, what about jubilant life? Well, I expect the stock to be in the green today. It was good uh, sort of commentary that came out from the management. They did mention that the low dividend yield this time round that they've paid out is due to capex requirements. The promoters, uh, promoters who had sold, uh, had sold at a discount, and that is normal practice. So there was some clarification on that. And for U.S. generics, they said the worst is behind. Nomura has raised their target price to 1,100 rupees on that particular stock. Okay, we will get you more details on all that, all the action that took place at the conference call. It was interesting. But uh, before that, PC Jewelers is also on our radar. They have that board meeting today, Sonal. The PCJ refuses to go out of news every day. Well, as you said, the board will be meeting today to consider the buyback. And also one more reason, because the stock has entered FNO ban today, it will be in focus. Now, as we already spoke about it, uh, with the shareholders' approval, they can buy back around 910 crore rupees. And with the board approvals, they can buy back around 364 crore rupees. Remember, the management had told CNBC TV18 that promoters will not tender their shares in the buyback. So that is one thing that we need to focus on. Focus on and other thing that we need to focus on is the share buyback price, which as per SEBI regulation, should be an average of the last 30 days moving average. So that stock will be in focus today. Yeah, so uh, last three months and last two weeks, uh, uh, those are the two uh, you know, uh, prices. Uh, works out to somewhere around uh, you know, 300 uh, or 20 rupees per share. But uh, also the bigger uh, queue today, I think, would be because it's in uh, out, it's an FNO ban. So last time you had this uh, FNO ban, the stock rallied because uh, you can't short, obviously. Okay. And it's even one stock where you want to short. Uh, so let's see how this one reacts. It's been really a roller coaster ride, of course, for PC jewelers. Uh, but Ekta, yesterday, Strites made a big move, uh, and there was some delivery buying as well on that. Yes, and there was a conference call that took place post-market, so that's what they'll be reacting to. The management says the merger, which they are undertaking in Australia with Apotex as well as Arrow, which is their business, is going to help them scale the Australia market by three to four years. Macquarie is positive. They say they expect this merger to fortify the company's Australia business, and they remain bullish with the target price of 860. Probably some incremental buying on that one. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Let's quickly wrap this up with some other <coughs> results that came out post-market as yesterday. Interesting ones there. Sonal, what do you have? Uh, I'll start with Syntex Plastics. Weak set of numbers. Revenue were impacted by dip in the custom molding segment. The operating profit margins also went down by 470 basis points and the profits went down by 37% majorly because they had accounted for a one-time cost for uh, shutting down the US subsidy and loan restructuring expenses. Other stock in focus will be Paragmal. Good set of numbers. The total income went up by 21% at 517 crores. Profits, they came in up by around 18% but they could have been higher if there were no higher tax expenses. Naveen Florin, a uh, good set of numbers actually, but lower than what MK was estimating. Revenue went up by 5%. Operating profit margins, they uh, expanded by around 310 basis points. That is because they had lower cost of materials expenses and also depreciation went lower. Dhampur Sugar, again expected to be a weak set of numbers. Though the revenue growth, that was decent at around 22%. There was an EBIT loss in the sugar segment because which they reported an EBITDA loss of around 25 crores versus a profit last year. SIS India, good set of numbers. Uh, revenue was up, uh, up around 29%, and EBITDA, that came in at around 5.44% versus 5.2%. And PAT was lower, that was majorly an accounting adjustment, but overall a good set of numbers. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So there's a long list of stocks that you need to watch today. Let's do a quick recap now. Stocks expected to gain today are a couple of these oil marketing companies, HPCL, Titan, Aisha Motors, JSPL, Jubilant Life, PC Jewelers, Stride, Shasun, uh, Parag Milk, Naveen Florine and SIS India. While stocks that are expected to be under pressure today, Federal Bank because of that howler this quarter, Syntex Plastics and Dhampur Sugar. 
All right. Uh, well, uh, we're not done with uh, the top 10 list of stocks. We want to pick out Federal Bank for you because uh, the numbers were uh, uh, more than uh, clearly more than what the market was expecting in terms of slippages to NPA. Let's hear out uh, uh, the big uh, investor, Rakesh Junjunwala, quizzing the central bank management on the same thing at the investor call last evening. No, I don't understand the 65, 70 crore credit cost because you have 2800 gross NPS and 1550 is net NPS. You say you recognize 1000 to 1100 crores next year. 1100 to 1200 crores, yes. So, your gross NPS will become around 4000. 1100 to 1200 crores is slippage, Rakesh. Hello? That will be the slippages for the year. No, recovery roughly in a quarter if you've seen 222 crores in Q3 and 239 crores in Q4. Cash will be much lower then. Maybe around 500, 600. No, fresh slippages will be 1100 to 1200. Then we have a net of the uh, recoveries and upgrades per quarter. So, uh, right, so therefore, 1100 is upgrade. So that means the gross NP should not be more than 3,300. Increase should not be more than 400 crores. Okay, some disappointment there coming in from Rakesh Junjunwala with respect to how the numbers shaped up this time around. Of course, we will try and get you more details from the management itself. Let's take a quick break. Our technical experts, Ashwini Gujral, Mitesh Thakkar, Prakash Kaur.